Hello and welcome back to Sunny Talk Spurs and today we're going to take a bit of a deep dive with a special guest into our newest signing, Manor Solomon. But before we get into this one, why don't you drop a cheeky like and a subscribe onto the channel. I would greatly appreciate it now. Let's get into the deep dive. So I'm joined by a Fulham fan and my mate from TalkSport, Mr. Harry Durham. How are you doing, Harry? I'm doing all right, mate, apart from uh, seems like like classic Spurs, stealing every single Fulham player from under the sun. I'm sick of it. I'm bored of it. Just get some originality. That's what I reckon. I've got to admit, Fulham, apart, if I had to name, like, Fulham are probably my next favourite London team, if that's even a thing, because I hate the others so much. And as, as you say, we have so much in common that you've got to, you know, you wear white, you're on the river, I live near Fulham now. Like, you know, there is a lot going for you, I can't lie. Is it because it's like the closest team that could easily become a non-league team in an instant and can get relegated from every single... Us and Brentford, really, isn't it? Yeah. We're not real football clubs. So <laughs> let's get into this then. Obviously, Spurs are signing Manor Solomon on a free due to his contract expiring from Shakhtar. And Fulham just didn't want him. So first of all, I was going to say to you, did you yeah. not have an option at all or an obligation to buy? Was that just never a thing? The thing is, like last season, like every Fulham fan knows, every single summer is an absolute roller coaster. If you're a Fulham fan, in your head, and it's what the third of July when we we're recording this. When you hear someone like Willian has rejected a contract, or that's just a classic start to a Fulham summer where everyone thinks, "Wow, how's this stuff not getting over the line?" And last summer when we signed Polina, we signed Solomon. On loan, we signed Pereira, we signed Issa Diop, the list goes on and on. We were all screaming at Tony Khan uh, and the entire board to do more and make some more movements. And one of them was Manuel Solomon. Manuel Solomon was one of the biggest sort of like conspiracies of last summer in, I don't know, every Fulham fan's memories of, of last year. There were photos that were zoomed in on him. At pre-season, no real football, uh, no real announcements were made of Manuel Solomon last year. Mm. And there was always the rumour and what Spurs are going through now of the FIFA rulings with Ukraine and Shakhtar Donetsk. And that's yeah. exactly the same as what we had last year. So obviously I've, I've longed out my whole answer to you, Sonny. But basically, pretty much, it was £8 million that we had to spend. And all of us last year uh, knew... This price had to be made and obviously we didn't make it because we're a club that's got a lot of money, but like Spurs, Fulham can be incredibly stingy and that not want to spend. Right, doesn't it? We're on yeah. the same level. That's probably why I like you because we've got so much in common. In the <laughs> and not wanting to spend that sort of fee. We were just trying to, I guess, probably be naive about the whole thing. Like, yes, Solomon scored like quite a few goals when he first started off for Fulham. But I think we were probably very naive and probably very ignorant in the fact that we instantly probably thought we were going to get him after a season long loan. But mm. it's not happened. And I'm sure I'll come on to it later on anyway. I'm actually secretly glad that it, ha it hasn't don't, happened. Don't, don't tell me that, Harry, mate. Come on, don't tell me that. Because it's hey. I, I'm getting, I've got excited about this one more than, you know, I really wanted us to probably sign Harvey Barnes. But now, when you well, say... Harvey, you, Barnes you, is coming, Harvey Barnes is coming to us. I think that's, that's, what, that's, that's what's literally going to happen. That's the transfer merry go <laughs> God. And then, like, the fact that you've said you paid £8 million and we're getting for free really sums up the... Whole... Oh no, we were gonna play. We didn't want to pay eight million. Oh, you that didn't want the... to. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that's that's the reason why. So is that why um, he sort of? Because I was looking at his stats the other day, and he's made he made nineteen Premier League appearances, but fifteen were from the bench. Yeah. So is that what it was all about? It's probably you've just gone. Actually, no, we don't want to pay pay these sort of fees. Well, I think he kind. Of, what do you mean, like a playing sense or a financial yeah, like, sense did, of why did, we like, didn't did, want to did, sign did, him? Yeah, like did you think actually no, we're not going to sign him, we're not going to play him, and then we don't have to pay? Or... Potentially, potentially. I think he just got found out a little bit. There was a real uh, moment, kind of like the back end of last season. It was probably like April when we played Villa away, and I did a video on it 
with like sort of five, maybe even like less than five games to go in the season, I was like, Fulham's season is over. This is off the back of mm. uh, losing to Manchester United in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, where literally about tw- what felt like the whole team got sent off and we crashed that. out. That was a good video. Um, <laughs> I lost my head. And then yeah. Alexander Mitrovic, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. Um, basically, everyone sort of like, had just given up and I thought Solomon had been sussed out but then a part of me in my head was like do you know what I'm going to give him a bit more time um everyone's allowed an off day all of us no matter what profession you work in you have an off day and stuff like that but then it just started like continuing and Willian started like continuing his fine form on left wing and obviously he got selected ahead of him and obviously like we said his first five or six games put up a lot of goals, yeah. And before we just come on, I wanted to get my numbers right. And I think, obviously, yeah, he did come, come in off the bench quite a few times as well. But he went something like 12 games without a goal. Oh. Uh, obviously, a mixture. I can't. I didn't have time to obviously add the minutes up mm-hmm. of how many he played. And yes, he was coming in off the bench. But he wasn't having that same sort of like impact. Um, I think he saw it, like I mentioned in the video yesterday, he's a very... Tricky player, he's a hard player to read. He's very skillful, great burst of pace. The ball sometimes sticks to his boot like glue, which is which is fantastic. Incredible ball carrier, incredible mm. agility, low centre of gravity. But I think he just got sussed out. We've got other worries to think about because we literally have no left wingers now. So oh God. that's the thing. I feel let like... let that sink in. <laughs> I feel like with Fulham, it would have been like this: the whole of the Solomon Debar would have been a riot. But it's maybe because of the whole William scenario that it's oh maybe, God, maybe a bit yeah. of a. I mean, probably I won't go into William as much as no, Dave please we'll don't. <laughs> so the thing I was going to say is you pretty much answered one of my questions already. But do you reckon he could? You know, because I've been doing my research as well, and it seems like you've, yeah. you've, you've said it there. You know, he's tricky, agile, but it's his end product that probably needs work. So do you reckon he could make that? I'm not saying that. Spurs and Fulham are on different levels, but do you reckon you know Tottenham? There's a few more eyes on us. Do you reckon he could make that step up? You maybe a manager like Ange could get the best out of him. Um, potentially, I think it's quite a big step up from Fulham to Spurs. Like it doesn't take a genius to work out how big Spurs actually is compared to Fulham on sort of like a global scale. But this guy is like the biggest guy. I think he's got a lot of pressure on him anyway because he is literally the superstar that is coming out of Israel at the moment. Mm. Like you probably would have seen on your channel, the amount of love that he gets from Israel, the amount of messages you've probably gotten in Hebrew, like like I, like I, like I did, for God's sake, when he was scoring so many goals for Fulham and you have to translate it because you don't know what's it. That, they, they, these guys love Manuel Solomon. They love him. But to fit in Ange's system, and of course, Ange Postacoglu was incredibly successful at Celtic, winning the treble last year, it kind of needs to end Tottenham's trophy drought. I don't know. He's not been in English football long enough. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I've said I get that, all yeah. the things, all the things that I have, and playing at level like Fulham, where you can shine for Fulham, but literally, what what was it? Nineteen games that you said in total. Yeah. And a majority of them coming off of the bench. I I, I think it's actually quite hard to call I think once he arrives at Tottenham of course he's got those goals it's called for Fulham but it's kind of like a clean slate it's 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 almost it's, like, it's a, almost like, like a fresh Fulham. beginning it's almost pretty like much Fulham. I think what, pretty what, much what helps is I did a video where I explained where we needed certain positions and winger was one because if you think our front three is pretty set you've got Son you've got Kulisevsky we've made permanent we've got Kane we got rid of Lucas Moura he, he's left the club and then Dan Juma was on loan. Obviously, that was a whole story in itself. So he is sort of coming in as that off the bench option anyway, and he's got time on his side. So I'm not really worried that he's being thrusted into the first team straight away. He will have time to develop. It, he will be an option off the bench that is probably better because when I looked at our bench last season, there wasn't much coming off it at all. You know. Because Richarlison did start a lot of games and then we had a few injuries as well in the front line. So, if anything, 
the argument is, is he better than Dan Juma? And I think the jury might be out because we didn't see the best of Dan Juma either. I just have more hope that Manuel Solomon's going to be played because it's not Antonio Conte at the club. Now, of course, then you're going to be playing a completely different brand of football as well. Like it's mm. it's not going to be as negative as what it was under Jose Mourinho and also uh, Antonio Conte as well. You got I always at the Poster Coglu said when he like, first came in, he obviously wants Spurs to be winning matches, but he wants them to be scoring lots of goals as well. Mm. Like your system is like I hate watching Spurs like the last couple of seasons because it's just dull and I think every Spurs fan probably agree with me and so yet somehow Harry Kane still manages to put up like 30 goals a season it's ridiculous he will yeah he, he will be a menace on that front line mark my words I think he will but is he going to rival Son for that left wing position probably not I like listen I think he was a bit of a one trick pony at Fulham like just putting it out there but I think this is quite a big step up so far, like I look at it right now, and I'm like, he's still like so young. He's still so young. Mm. Did 19 games for Fulham in the Premier League. Uh, I don't know if that comes under all competitions, but let's say under all competitions because he played in the FA Cup as well. Probably played like 23, 24 matches in total in all competitions. Mm. I think he probably should have signed for someone like an Aston Villa or. If Fulham had a deal on the table, and we don't know because we're not at Motspur Park and we're not in the Fulham board boardroom, um, Fulham might have given him an offer. We never know that. But harking back to what you said about sort of like pressure and will he be able to take it and stuff like that, mate, it's it, not meaning to sound like a cop out, but it's like one of those things that's like only time can tell. But at the same time, I do think it's a bit of a bit of a step up to be honest with you and you know what that Tottenham crowd can be like when oh, um, honestly mate at the moment it is one of the most toxic atmospheres you could go to in the yeah. Premier League so when, just, when stuff hits the fan oh, you know man. when uh, you know what happens honestly and one of my my penultimate question to you is where do you reckon this ranks in terms of players that have made the switch from West London to North London and is he better than Josh Onoma <laughs> oh, so obviously Josh was he? Josh Onoma was it, one of your youth prodigies. Yeah, he was part of the Sessegnon deal, twenty-five million plus. Josh Onoma. That's the, yeah, of course. Uh, so we say this in the sense of like Fulham players that have gone to Spurs or just completely um, like back and forth. Well, I, because I put my top three is I'd probably put Dembele, Scott yeah. Parker. Oh no. Them oh Berbatov, I forgot about Berbatov. That's yeah. tricky. I think it's so I them three, know. them three in an order. But I did love yeah. Dempsey, but we only had a year of Dempsey, so. And you got you got to remember Danny Murphy as well. Danny of Murphy, oh, former crazy. Fulham captain, baby, former Fulham captain. I think Berbatov's um, probably got to be top. Ber Ber Berbatov top because he's so cool. Dembele because he's amazing, and then Scott yeah. Parker because I love him, and also he was your manager as well. Berbatov, um, but obviously came from Manchester United to Fulham mm. uh, Dembele who I think uh, I hate the word underrated but one of the most criminally underappreciated no, centre defensive midfielders of a complete generation in the Premier League mm. uh, Danny Murphy and I can't put Scott Parker in there because Bobby I Zamora Clint, I got but Clint Dempsey oh Clint Dempsey not Bobby Zamora I thought, I who wore Bobby. number two who wore number two for your club which is yeah, uh, was a disgrace kinder, kindergarten Team or something like that. <laughs> Bloody lo load of rubbish. Anyway, final question, pure fullness. What are Yo. you making of your transfer window so far? And are you worried about losing anyone else, especially Palina? Yes. Um, I think what we are beginning to see is Tottenham Hotspur raiding Fulham once again. If you you, you don't actually have to look too far. I know transfer rumours are rumours, of course. And anyone can sit in their bedroom and be a little keyboard warrior and wait um, and make any sort of ridiculous transfer. But when I'm seeing things like Tosin, who's obviously out of contract next season, linked to Spurs, Joao Polina, Ange Postacoglu, like headlines that Ange Postacoglu is in love with Fulham's 70 oh, pounds. Don't, 70... don't start me on the jargon of transfer. I, the insert team is an admirer. Like, <laughs> I, I admire Messi. We're not touching him. Like, it's, I just hate the, the modern Twitter language of like, 
shortlisted and admiring yeah. and t- scouting and touting and oh, oh. but so to sort of say round up my chance I think it's probably apart from Manuel Solomon who's now gone it's mm. most likely Polina who you're interested in Tosin that we've known I'll for a couple it. of weeks now and uh, outside shout is Alexander Mitrovic especially with Ivan Tony being banned um, incredible shot lack of pace but Kane's not had pace ever so he doesn't need it everyone runs around him that's what happens like more or all uh, and that's exactly what Mitrovic he's incredible in the air as well exactly right so I'm happy about that we're going to raid the whole of West London and do me one favour though can you please be one of the best teams in West London because I can't deal after watching the Pochettino interview I could only like deal with it for three minutes before I had to turn off because I was just swearing uh, how <laughs> I feel let down by the man but yeah, that's what it is but anyway cheers Harry for joining me that was, that was enjoyable thank you very much I, I'm sure we're going to collab a lot more going forward as well I can just vision it already but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below is Manuel signing good enough for Tottenham can he make the step up were you impressed with him at Fulham and shout to the next let me know as I say in the comments down below I'd like to say a massive thank you to Harry Durham for joining me today on the channel link to his channel is in the description below but before you go and do that drop a like and a subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs I've been Sunny and I'll see you on the next one ciao